As guitar builders, we all end up building one of these. This is a fret holder. It's usually made out of scrap wood. It has 24 holes and they're numbered. We place our frets in here and we use this to hold them while we're doing a fret job. This is made out of scrap. It's a two by two. It has a hoop on here that I can use to hang it. But this is quite ugly. I've noticed online that a lot of guitar builders have better scrap wood than me and they actually build really nice looking tools. I think we can do better. Now that we have the 3D printer, we can actually design something. Design something that's not just utilitarian, but something that's pretty to look at. Something that looks good on our bench or in our drawers or hanging on a wall. So let's get to it. So it's really easy for us to kind of get stuck in these sort of squares because that's the way usually our material comes in squares. And so I have this basic design here, and this is what I want to stay away from. And I kind of want to show you my process for coming up with my design. And so this is a standard sketch where everything is constrained, where I have three rows of eight that takes care of our 24 holes. So what I can do here is extrude this, and I can extrude this so that we actually have a fret holder. But this is what I'm trying to stay away from. If we had had a piece of scrap wood in the shop and we made a fret holder, this is what it would look like. Nothing terribly fancy, nothing fun to look at. And that's what I want to do. I want to do something fun, something that looks good on the bench when it's sitting there. So I actually had some inspiration. I was out one day and I saw a sticker in one of these like lamp posts by a cafe. And I saw this triangle and it reminded me of that MC Escher staircase where you're kind of going, up the staircase, but you're really going down the staircase and you end up at the same place. And so I really love this triangle look. It's something that I wanted to mimic. Now there's some impossible geometry in here and I didn't want to go that far. I wanted something that was functional. It still has to be a utilitarian tool holder, but this was my inspiration and this is how I get my inspiration. So we're going to build something like that. So how do we do that? Well, we start off with our basic tool holder, but what we're going to do is we're going to split it into threes because a triangle has three sides. So when I split it into threes, I can start moving these things around. And so in this case, what I did was I was able to sort of mimic the triangle where I have my three rows of eight. Then it's a matter of building a sketch and extruding the rest of the triangle. So now I'm actually building the extra geometry that's needed to kind of finalize those points. And then we basically end up where we want to be with this cool triangle. Now this is something that'll look good sitting on a bench or even look good hanging, just like my last fret holder was hanging. Although this fret holder is not terribly fun to look at. So obviously I wanna kinda of take this a little bit further in terms of the design and I wanna make steps, something similar to the inspiration where we have a side of the triangle that's slightly higher than the other side, which is slightly higher than the third side. And so to do that, we're going to build some geometry where we kind of like offset these heights. So as you can see here, I have these heights offset where we have the top row of eight higher than the nine through 16. And then the last row of 17 through 24, much lower. I think this kind of offset geometry is visually striking. So this is visually interesting. It's not just a flat triangle. And it also works really well when you're putting your frets in there, but I think it's going to really give you a visual indicator of like one through eight, nine through 16 and 17 through 24. But we want to take this a step further and we want to also include some additional geometry here. And so I put my logo in here. Then we need to take it a step further. I really love the top of this model, but I didn't care for the sides. Now the side profiles look really cool because we have all those kind of offset heights and that looks really again visually interesting but the sides themselves these flat surfaces were kind of boring right so what i want to do is do something interesting with those what we're going to do is we're going to build this kind of like low poly look i think this low poly look has all these super interesting facets so if we jump ahead you can see i have all these sort of cool random facets. Now each side is different from the other side. No two sides are identical. And I did this by hand. So I really dig this look and it's super interesting. It's fun to look at and it actually still is utilitarian. It serves a purpose. So it's a really cool look that you can do when you're looking for some interesting texture or to really kind of spice up sort of a boring tool like a fret holder. There you go. Let's take a look at some cool renders. 
So if I put a nice texture on here, that's gonna be black and very similar to the PLA I'm gonna use, you can see that all this looks so gorgeous. The facets really rack the light in a beautiful way. All the different heights of the different sides look really cool. It's just a really cool tool to look at. Now I know that since we're 3D printing, a lot of the tiny details may not come out like we want. For example, the logo, all those little lines for the maze may not come out as tight and as crisp as we want them. I think it's going to be a way more elegant design than just a piece of scrap wood with some Sharpie and, you know, drill pressed holes. So this did serve its purpose for a long time, but I think this is the way I want to start moving forward, constructing my own tools that have a unique sort of visual bent to them. So let's get 3D printing. So this thing came out pretty darn cool. It's actually pretty lightweight. I'm very happy with the weight on this and the facets do exactly what they're supposed to and refracting that light in a really cool and unique way. So really happy the way the 3D printer was able to take all this kind of low poly design and do it so well. And of course the bottom texture is always unique. A triangle shape is always gonna be super cool. And this is gonna look so good sitting on the bench. Logos right there and it came out pretty good. I mean, could be a little bit crisper. You can see a little bit of layer lines on the top, but that's to be expected with 3D prints. And you can hang it. So that's already kind of built into the geometry of a triangle. It'll fit into a drawer if you need to kind of tuck it away and it's gonna look so cool on the bench. And I designed these holes, I believe they're six mil. So these holes are a little bit bigger than you need to hold a fret wire, but I thought they could serve a dual purpose like not only can you fit a fret wire in there, you could probably fit some drill bits in there too. That might be an added bonus. So, came out super cool. I couldn't be happier. So if you have a 3D printer, pick up these files. Print one out yourself. Super easy to print. Standard print settings, nothing special I had to do in the slicer settings. Just hit print and go. If you don't have a 3D printer, I might be able to offer two or three of these on my store but the files are there and they cost 99 cents. No tax, no shipping, 99 cents. You can't beat that. I spent a lot of thought on this. I spent a lot of time in the design process and I think it paid off. These things are super cool to look at, sitting there on your bench, super cool hanging on a wall. I don't think you'll regret this. So thanks for watching. Take it easy.